Wireless standards are all handled by the International IEEE Committee 802, and the wireless network is the 802.11 Committee. There have been many updates to 802.11 over time. One of the most recent larger updates was in 2007, but you'll see updates occur very frequently because obviously wireless networks are very, very popular. What you're looking for with most wireless networks is this trademarked logo called the Wi-Fi trademark. If you see that, that means means that the device has gone through testing that verifies that it will work and interoperate properly with other wireless devices. 802.11a was one of the very first wireless standards in October of 1999. When it was first introduced, it operated in the 5 gigahertz range. It has been updated recently to also allow special licensing that can allow it to operate in the 3.7 gigahertz range as well. 802.11a was also very popular when it first came out because it allowed us to go 54 megabits per second over this wireless connection, which was much faster than the other wireless standard of 802.11b. Unfortunately, it had a much smaller range of 802.11b because of the type of frequencies that it used. Those higher frequencies were easily absorbed by other things that were in the way. And so it had generally about a third of the range of 802.11b or 802.11g. But for certain environments, like working in a very large warehouse, you could put an access point at the top and generally hit everybody on the floor of the warehouse, it became a very, very popular type of wireless network. 802.11b came out right about the same time as 802.11a, also in October of 1999. It also had a different set of frequencies that it uses. It uses 2.4 gigahertz versus the 5 gigahertz that we happen to see in the 802.11a. It also was much slower than 802.11a, meaning it was only 11 megabits per second of theoretical throughput versus the 54 that we saw with 802.11a. Those were pretty big differences, especially in 1999. But it had better range, which means we could put it in the floor of a building, and it had the ability to go much farther over those types of frequencies. Those frequencies weren't subjected to the same type type of absorption problems that we saw with the 5 gigahertz frequencies. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things already on 2.4 gigahertz. So anything like a baby monitor, a microwave oven, a cordless phone, these are things that created interference at that 2.4 gigahertz range. And we had to become accustomed to engineering around a number of those issues if we wanted to run an 802.11b network. 802.11g was introduced in June 2003 as an upgrade to 802.11b. In fact, the 802.11g standard requires that it interoperate with the older 802.11b devices. So obviously, this also operates at 2.4 gigahertz, exactly the same as our 802.11b. But one of the big differences was speed. 802.11g went 54 megabits per second, which was much faster than the 802.11b. It's also the same as the 802.11a. So in a way, we're getting some parity with the types of options that we have and the types of speeds that would be available to us. Because it was backwards compatible, we could simply take out our 802.11b access point and drop an 802.11g access point in and then slowly migrate and upgrade the other devices on our network. But of course, these had exactly the same frequency problems as 802.11b, and you weren't going to solve any of those issues by simply moving to the G environment. The latest standard you'll find is 802.11n. It was one that was ratified and made available in October of 2009, although we had pre-release or pre-in types of products available much earlier than that. 802.11n operates at both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, giving you a number of options available for both frequencies and to be able to send different speeds of traffic through. You can, using different ways of communicating with 802.11n, send 600 megabits per second of theoretical throughput through an 802.11n network. And that's because it's using something called MIMO, which is multiple input and multiple output. You can run multiple types of feeds through different antennas and different radios inside of a single 802.11 access point. If we were to summarize then all of the different standards, you can see them here, 802.11a using 5 gigahertz and 3.7 gigahertz if you're licensing it for that special need. And that runs at 54 megabits per second. And notice 
notice that it has one allowable stream. And notice that also on the 802.11a 5 gigahertz, your outdoor range will generally be somewhere around 120 meters. But look when you use that specially licensed 3.7 gigahertz range, you can see why it's so specialized. You can go up to 5,000 meters over that particular frequency. You also have 802.11b and 802.11g, which were both 2.4 gigahertz, but there were differences in speeds between those, the 11 megabit versus the 54 megabit. And because they were generally the same frequencies, you can generally go about the same distance in an outdoor area. 802.11n, of course, uses both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz to give 150 megabits of it as a total theoretical throughput on a single stream. And we can have up to four streams running at the same time using that MIMO. And outdoors, we can get about 250 meters, so a little bit further distance when you're using something like 802.11n.